Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got Shimano's new 12-speed wireless, mostly wireless anyways, uh, group set. In this case, it is a Dura Ace group set. I've been out riding it for the last hour and some odd minutes, uh, and it's nice, it's good, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I wanna talk about the new power meter, the one for both the Dura Ace side and the Ultegra side. And the reason is because I've been a pretty vocal critic of Shimano's first generation power meter. It was, to put it lightly, a dumpster fire. And it's not just me saying that. Virtually every viewer out there pointed out how inaccurate it was. And the reasons are pretty Pretty interesting for that and I'm gonna dive into what Shimano says they've changed going forward now for this video I don't have that power meter on this bike I wish I did I'd be out there like throwing it against other power meters testing it comparing all the kind of stuff but no such power meter on our bike exists here at Eurobike and there's no power meters out there for any other reviewers either until probably October and then general availability in December instead though I've spent the morning talking with the power meter team to understand what's changed whether they've recognized the dumpster fire that was the previous generation unit and then what's coming down the road so I've got kind of three categories of things to talk about. Uh, the first is what stayed the same, the second is what has changed, and the third is what is coming. And I've got my handy dandy notes here because it's it's been a long day. Uh, so first off, what has stayed the same? The 300 hour battery life, that's the same. Uh, it's still using a battery inside effectively the bottom bracket right there. Uh, essentially, it's just like a half a DI2 battery is what Shimano says. Uh, so that all remains the same. The claimed accuracy remains the same at plus or minus 2%. However, Shimano states that they believe their accuracy in testing right now is closer to one and a half to 1%. So plus or minus one and a half to one percent, uh, which would be industry norm. Uh, it's still broadcasting standard AMP plus and Bluetooth smart power. Uh, Shimano did add Bluetooth smart power to the first generation power meter uh, like a year or two after release, maybe three years after release, a while later, they added it via firmware update. So standard issue broadcasting across both of those is supported. Shimano is still using magnets on the frame uh, and from there they get cadence and they also get position of the crank arm. And that's interesting for two reasons. Most companies have gone away from that. They just use accelerometers and these days and ages that works just fine and dandy. However, when I get to the what's coming down the road section, this might make a bit more sense as to why they kept that. Moving along, they still have the same active temperature compensation and they still have the same general placement of the strain gauges on both the left and the right side. And this is a dual-sided system, meaning that you have both left side and right side power. Uh, whether you're buying at the Ultegra level or the Dura Ace level, it's the same, it's both dual-sided. Now, let's talk about what's different. And this is the most important part of the conversations I had this morning. As I said before, the original Shimano first generation power meter was not good accuracy wise. Uh, mostly it was quite variable, uh, meaning that primarily the right side especially uh, would have variability in it and that would in turn cause the entire system to be inaccurate. And that mostly came down to the materials they were using and the way they manufacture the crank sets. And so when I talked to the Shimano this morning, they indeed confirmed that. They said that going forward into this new power meter, they've done two major changes. Uh, one, one, they've changed the materials and two they've changed the manufacturing process uh, and here's an exact quote they gave me uh, from their lead engineer they said they redeveloped material of the crank arm itself to have better predictability of the strain gauges and that's a huge huge thing if you're in the power meter industry you just heard that quote and you went yeah they understood the problem. And Shimano said the reason for that lack of predictability in the first generation product is because in the first gen, they took the existing crank arms they had and they said, we're gonna slap a power meter on it. Just as if like a Stages or Four Eyes or anyone else were to take a Shimano crank arm, throw a power meter on it and say, hmm, done. The problem is the manufacturing process and the materials used in the 9100 series Dura-Ace crank arms and the 8100 series uh, Ultegra crank arms made that unpredictable. Unpredictable for Stages and Four Eyes and everyone else, but also unpredictable for Shimano. So everyone was in the same boat of that being kind of a dumpster fire of accuracy. So the fact that Shimano this morning came out straight up and said, yeah, that didn't work very well for us is sort of important going forward. It means that they hopefully understand the issues. Now, of course, I'll have to test that in real life in October when I can do that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to testing that and seeing how that works out. They said they've had team FAJ and team DSM testing it uh, over the past spring and summer, as well as their internal testers. And also uh, one of the national teams in Japan has been testing it too there. So hopefully between all those teams, they find the accuracy they're looking for and everyone else is looking for going forward. Now, a couple other changes to note. Number one is the battery cap is replaceable. Uh, they said, I quote, we literally listened to our consumers. Everyone, including myself, pointed out that if you accidentally broke off the battery cap on the first gen unit, there was nothing you can do except the, send the entire thing back to Shimano to get replaced. It was sort of ludicrous, but they, they fixed that. Number two is they changed the battery charge location from the top to the side, minor thing, uh, but they also changed the charger. So it's now the same charger that the rest of the DI2 system uses on the rear derailleur, which makes sense. But let's talk about what's coming. What's coming down the road here that they didn't really talk about too much anywhere else. And that's primarily a cycling dynamics sort of metric. Uh, now, of course, you may remember about a year and a half ago, they bought Pioneer and Pioneer had their 
Pioneer pedaling metrics. And they were arguably the most advanced pedaling metric in the power meter industry, but they were sort of like hamstrung by the fact that uh, they relied on power meters head unit and then eventually Wahoo's head unit, but Wahoo didn't record those metrics. So they didn't really catch on. They didn't use the official Amp Plus spec for uh, pedaling dynamics within the power meter side of things. So not a lot of people were using it. Uh, now going forward, Shimano says a couple things. One, they're hoping to have this sort of pedaling dynamics thing ready by the end of the year. Uh, and they don't have like official branding on it yet. So I'll just see on that. Uh, number two, they reiterated like nine times over in the conversation, they're committed to standards. They said they don't want to have to have people dependent on just one manufacturer of head unit. Uh, they want it to be open. So anyone that supports the AMP Plus open spec, uh, they'll support. But they did also note there are things that they want to have from an additional data standpoint that's not supported in the AMP Plus spec uh, that they may layer on top of that. And that's not new. Like plenty of companies do that. Garmin did that for a long time as well, where they follow the standard and there's additional data they put inside of that uh, that their own head units can pick up that others might not have. So I'm on board with that. As long as they support the standards for that kind of stuff, that's key. Uh, and if they layer in some other stuff along the way that's not supported in the standard, I'm good with that. Okay, last but not least, a couple of odds and ends. Uh, one, the power meter is the same on both the Dura-A side and the Ultegra side, exact same. Uh, they said it's built modularly. Uh, they are different materials between the crank arms of Dura-Ace and Ultegra slightly, uh, but they said there's no differences there in terms of accuracy for them. Uh, that was compensated for when they designed those crank arms uh, to be supporting the power meter from the ground up, which is one of the big things that says that unlike in that first generation where they had the crank arm and they slapped a power meter on it, this time they built those two together uh, so that they would actually work correctly. Uh, number two is that Shimano actually offers a calibration service, something I never knew existed, uh, and apparently no other consumer does either, uh, but you can actually send your Shimano power meter to them, uh, their distributors, and they will in turn do a full calibration on it. Uh, they said in the past, pro teams actually did that mostly, but they said it's open for anyone, so that's, that's out there. I suppose in the past, you just knew it was inaccurate, so there's no real point in sending it. Moving along, uh, finally pricing, uh, Ultegra. So if you buy the Ultegra crank set, so not the whole thing, just the crank set with the chain rings, uh, for power, it is 1160 US dollars or $315 without it. So a pretty big uh, premium for the power meter, but we'll talk about that in just a second. And on the Dura-A side, it's 1470, including the power meter for the uh, crank set and the chain rings or 625 without it. But here's the thing on those prices, the vast majority of people will never pay those. You're gonna buy as part of a bike, they're paying OEM prices. Uh, and so that's what the real, the real pricing we'll look at is what the final spec prices are of the bike, including a power meter. So we'll have to see what those full prices look like on bikes going forward. And most importantly, what the accuracy looks like. Uh, but I will have that for you as soon as that's available. Look for that probably in October-ish or so. I'm not really sure exactly. Uh, maybe in November, depending on when they're ready and when they call that thing final and complete. And then I'll release all of my testing, all of my data, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they said they're ready for me. They said they're ready for me to throw all of my testing protocols at it, uh, and they believe they're gonna have much better results than last time. So if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.